Hello again, rail fans. You know, I got a question recently on one of my scanner videos about all that jargon that dispatchers use, uh, dispatchers and train crews use. They couldn't understand it. And I'll tell you, it takes a, a while to get the hang of that, get the gist of what those guys are talking about. Because it's weird. I mean, it's unlike any other kind of kind of uh, normal banter. Uh, I've learned a lot of it over the years just by listening to the radio, listening to the scanner, uh, and from uh, uh, talking to some of my dispatcher friends that I've, I've gotten to know over the years, uh, XCSX and Norfolk Southern Dispatchers. So today, I thought I would go into some of the... Um, some of the descriptions, some of the definitions of some of that jargon. So here's a few examples. EC1 number 70421, date 11-22-19, location AZA 884.0, trains to K339-22, engine CSXT 4001, JL Brown, circle line 1A, operate on the main track, south direction. From the SAS, south end of Valrico, main track, to the milepost SVC 839.0. Over. Here's the train in question, K33922, and here's what just happened on the radio. Form EC1 is a standardized means to communicate mandatory directives from the train dispatcher to train and engine crews. Each one has its own unique number and always has today's date. The location means the location of the train when the orders were given and copied. Then you have the train ID or symbol and lead engine number. The engine number is an age-old tool for positively identifying what train you're looking at. After more than 150 years, railroads still use it because it works. Next is the name of the employee copying the orders. Then the track authority, K339, can operate from Valrico Junction, running south on a route to New Wales. No one else can use this route until one of the members of the K339 crew releases that authority. These rules are strictly followed to keep people from getting killed. It's as simple as that. You see one number 73660. 73660. Dates 112419. Location A 881.7. RT Walker, Circle Line 1A. Operate on the main track, north direction, from the milepost A. 881.7, main track, to the NAS, Ybor City, main track, circle on 4 until 9 o'clock, 11-24-19, over. Here's a track inspector getting authority that begins in unsignaled track and moves into CTC, or signaled track. Foreman R.T. Walker, in his high railer vehicle, now has dispatcher authority from the milepost A881.7 to the northward absolute signal at Ybor City. He only has that authority until 9 o'clock, at which time he will have to reauthorize or get off the track. That's the Ebor City signal, and he pulls right even with, but not past it, until he gets further permission. Again, these rules are created to keep people from getting killed. Now let's follow a yard job, working a couple of industries out of Yeoman Yard. Y103, JF. Y103, over. Hey, good morning, JF. Uh, we're on engine 6524. Let's see if we can come, come out of TS. We're between TS and uh, Sutton, north end of Sutton, and then go into the siding uh, after we work two customers over. All right, I'm ready for you there. TS crossing signal indication. Working between TS and the north and the Sutton. We'll be going into the siding there at Sutton when you're done with your work there. Uh, yes, sir. we got to possibly maybe work one customer in the siding. If uh, we got to go in there and look at it. And then if not, we're going to probably shove back and spin the Y. All right. I'm on you up to the north and the Sutton. You let me know when you're ready to go to the siding, and we'll go from there. Now, notice this is different than EC1 authority in that the operation is all in CTC territory and there will be signals involved. Y103 has signal indication out of Yeoman Yard at TS crossing. TS is that signal back there behind the train. He first is working this steel company just outside the yard. 
Then he will work a second customer a little farther down, then go into Sutton Siding and possibly work a third customer there. That's about two miles south of here. The dispatcher sets up the CTC system to authorize all the movements in this two-mile segment. That will include opening and closing mainline electrically locked switches. Okay, well, I hope this has been helpful. I hope this explains a little bit of that. If there's any questions about it or if there's uh, any corrections that you need to uh, let me know about, please do it in the comments section below. I look at all those comments. I reply to an awful lot of them. Uh, once again, please hit that like button. That's this thing if you like the video. That helps out a lot. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. And uh, until we do this again, I'll see you somewhere out there on the high iron. This is Danny Harmon, out.